Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Ersatz women's rights lawyer Lisa Bloom has finally been exposed for who she really is. Bloom has built a career posturing as a champion of the oppressed, but the only person who seems to be winning in that equation is Lisa Bloom. Last summer, for example, she represented Kathy Griffin following Griffin's Trump beheading stunt, only to have Griffin turn around and denounce her, Bloom, for excessive fees and, quote, fame whoring. This fall, the great feminist warrior fought to protect, of all people, Harvey Weinstein. Actress Rose McGowan says that Bloom offered her a seven-figure payday if she agreed to call Weinstein a changed man, which she did not agree to. Now, The Hill newspaper has a new report alleging that Lisa Bloom solicited funds to pay off women who would then accuse the president of sexual assault. Trace Gallagher has the full story on that. He joins us tonight. Trace? Hi, Tucker. Lisa Bloom says reports that women were paid to come forward with accusations of sexual misconduct by President Trump are nothing more than right-wing efforts to discredit victims. And yet, Bloom, the daughter of famed attorney Gloria Allred, fully acknowledges that she tried to get tabloid media outlets and pro-Hillary Clinton political action committees to pay these women. The Hill, which broke the story, says Bloom arranged for a donor to pay off one of the accuser's mortgage and tried to score a six-figure payout for another. One of the women who was offered $750,000 de declined to come forward. Lisa Bloom says the money of which she takes one third is meant to keep her clients safe and in some cases to help them relocate. Of Lisa Bloom's four clients, two of them decided to come forward and two did not, including one who decided to tell her story to the Hill after learning that Bloom was representing the alleged serial sexual harasser Harvey Weinstein. Bloom and Weinstein's relationship ended when rape allegations went public. The women who did not come forward say she supported Trump in 2016 and does not resent him because he stopped his advances toward her when she asked him to. Lisa Bloom says the women who did come forward are telling the truth and the story by The Hill is trying to undermine them now that they are gaining momentum. Tucker. Trace Gallagher, thank you. Emily Campano is a legal analyst and former federal attorney, and she joins us tonight. Uh, so, Emily, at this point, we know that Lisa Bloom, who for years has posed as a champion of women, particularly of victims of sexual assault, took money to flack, in essentially, uh, for Harvey Weinstein, discredit his victims. TMZ reports she recorded one of them uh, in an effort to discredit her. And now we learn that she's profiting from the sexual harassment claims of this next set of women. Why is she still able to do this? How does she get a pass to continue this pretty lucrative career she has flacking uh, for people like this? Exactly. What I find so disturbing here, you know, there's an element of hypocrisy fatigue here, frankly. And what is so disappointing about this in particular is that this is an attorney who's purporting to be a champion of these women's rights and values. And attorneys, especially in this realm, are supposed to be advocates. And that's more than just showing up in court. So the fact that she is subjecting these women to another round of abuse and trauma and shaming is incredibly disappointing here. And you know, it's not illegal for PACs to pay for true stories and to dig up dirt. We've seen it in the past with David Brock and Larry Flint. But sure. again, the fact that it's coming from an attorney is incredibly disappointing. And it takes a lot more in the state of California for an attorney to be admonished or disbarred. Honestly, we're not gonna see that for this. But it's just a subsequent betrayal. And again, it's another unraveling and revealing of someone who's a hypocrite. Why wouldn't the bar take action? I mean, here you have a person who was caught lying, uh, for one. At one point, she said this of Harvey Weinstein, I was never aware there were allegations of sexual assault. Well, of course she was. And she briefed the board of the Weinstein companies on this. I mean, she was, her job was to protect Harvey Weinstein against these allegations. That's not enough to get a censure from the bar in California? There's a pretty strict code of conduct in the state of California, but in terms of actual admonishment, she can be recommended for a review. But in past cases, it's just taken more for someone to be disbarred or admonished. And all of us find her behavior reprehensible and for me, embarrassing as a California state attorney. But again, it just takes a lot more here. And that, that is what's so disappointing, is I think these gray areas where there's dishonesty, but what was the exact relationship and nature of her signing on the dotted line with these clients and how, in essence, 
essence, does this break a specific rule that the California State Bar or the ABA has passed? Unfortunately, it's gray. And so it, it at this point, the illumination hopefully will decrease her client list, and that may be enough to at least, um, you know, render her uh, that she won't do this behavior in, in the future. Well, you'd think she would at least be publicly discredited. It does strike me as a non-attorney as unethical that she was trying to set up media appearances for people making claims of sexual assault or harassment and then was apparently, by her own admission, trying to take one-third of the fees. Is it normal to do this on commission as she seems to be doing? Right. You know, I personally have not seen that in the past. And she was clear and upfront with saying, well, we take a third. But what I found disturbing is the fact that her justification of such was the insurance fees and the electrical bills of her law firm. It really had a minimal correlation with her representing those women on air. And frankly, they're, they're, as you know, media appearances are often not rewarded because the whole point right. is there are ethical considerations, right, to support the veracity. You, you don't want to cross that line or present an appearance of impropriety. So here it's it's almost like she was running a racket but because it was she was blatant i don't see her being disbarred or being formally admonished it's just simply disappointing and reprehensible and as you said hopefully now this this revelation and illuminating it will make others refuse to work with her in the future yeah if you're paying the victims of harvey weinstein to lie and to vouch for his good character don't call yourself a feminist uh, that would be my rule emily thank you it's great yeah, to see you thank you Joe DeGeneva was a former U.S. attorney for the District of Columbia, and he joins us tonight. Joe, I have to just ask you very quickly before we get to the Russia investigation a question about Lisa Bloom. What does it take for a lawyer to be censured by the bar or to be disbarred? If you have multiple examples of lying and un unethical behavior, that's not enough? Uh, it's not. Usually in most bars, big bars like California and New York tend to protect their lawyers and their ethical systems tend to slap people on the wrist. Uh, my guess would be she would not get any type of ethical uh, re restrictions imposed on her as a result of this. I can tell you this, when we do a pro bono case at our firm, we don't take a cut of anything. We represent people for free. We even incur the cost. So right. whatever she said was pro bono, that's nonsense. I think that misrepresentation to the public is absolutely disgusting, but it's consistent with her behavior. Yeah, it's free, except I take a third. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about doublespeak. Um, so to this investigation, you, you obviously have conducted investigations. When you did, did you ever stack them with prosecutors who were personally hostile to the person being investigated? No, and, and let, let me just say this right, right now, Tucker. What you have now unfolding inside the FBI and the Department of Justice under Obama is a brazen plot to do two things to exonerate Hillary Clinton because of an animus toward Donald Trump, and then if she lost, to frame the incoming president for either a criminal act or impeachment. This is one of the most disgusting performances by the seniors officials at the FBI and the Department of Justice, and it demands that every one of these agents involved be fired, and that the people who are still in the Justice Department be fired, including Mr. Orr, and that they impanel a federal grand jury to investigate the conduct of McCabe and Strzok and Page and Comey and Orr and everybody in the Obama Justice Department who even touched this because it's very clear that they conspired to frame the incoming president of the United States. And it's, it's, it's a frightening and disgusting prospect that FBI officials, senior FBI officials, would do this, and those text messages are frightening. They're just frightening. The Trump administration oversees the Department of Justice now. What would it take to call some of these people to account for their behavior, at least to get to the bottom of it? Mr. Orr, for example, who met with people from Fusion right. GPS and didn't tell his superiors about it. His wife worked there. He didn't tell them about that either. Why is he still there? Well. That's a good question. He's been demoted. He lost his uh, associate deputy attorney general slot four doors down from Mr. Rosenstein. He's now back in his old job as the head of a, an organized crime drug task force. 
Uh, I do not understand how he can continue to stay in the department. In all likelihood, he's being investigated by the inspector general as part of that larger investigation uh, into what the Justice Department did with Comey and others to basically throw the case against Clinton. Uh, a bunch of dirty cops got together and decided to throw a case against the Democratic presidential nominee. I don't think Mr. Orr is going to be around the department very long because he can't function ethically in those constraints. So just finally, just some perspective for those of us who haven't conducted these investigations. We know that then-director Comey had written the speech he subsequently gave in July of 2016, two months before, in which he exonerated Hillary Clinton, right. before which he'd even interviewed her or a dozen of her top aides. Is that unusual to come to a conclusion like that, she's innocent, before even interviewing her? That it seems is, odd. It is not only extremely unusual, it's never happened before. James Comey threw the case against Hillary Clinton in conjunction with senior FBI officials and Justice Department officials in the Obama administration at the time. It's never done. Uh, Comey sold his soul to the devil. Believe me, uh, you cannot believe the telephone calls we're getting from current FBI people about how they cannot abide by what's going on. And one thing they can't understand is why is Andrew McCabe still at Christopher Ray's right hand inside the senior offices of the FBI? I mean, McCabe and Strzok and Page are all out of the same cloth. They conspired to exonerate improperly and politically Hillary Clinton and also, if she lost, to frame the incoming president of the United States with a false crime. This is a constitutional crisis, and Congress better stay on it until they get all the answers, and then there needs to be a grand jury. Washington, where no one is ever fired. That should be the sign as you drive in. Joe, thank you. Thank you. Not everyone agrees that the FBI's probe has been compromised. We'll talk to a top former Hillary Clinton advisor who thinks the FBI is doing a pretty good job. Stay tuned.